Hello, my name is Chris. I am the lead genius at Celsius BMW. I would like to first congratulate you on your M6 convertible and welcome you to the BMW family. I'd like to spend about 20 to 30 minutes with you today taking a look at the inside of this M6, making sense of everything that we have going on in here. And I also would like to remind you that this video is part of our YouTube channel. So when you're finished with it, maybe have some questions in a week or two or whatever the case may be, please go back to our YouTube channel, uh, click right into playlist, scroll right down to M6 uh, tutorial. Uh, this one is a 2018, but just pick the appropriate model year and then any video on our YouTube channel that is relevant to that video or to that model, I should say, is going to be all listed right there for you. So that is a great resource for customers as they're getting familiar with their vehicle. They can always uh, go back to that playlist and refer to it. And um, chances are learn something new because when I've made those videos, they are all, uh, all content that is uh, asked by uh, customers every single day. So uh, very common stuff there. So keep that in mind and uh, let's get started today with the M6. So very, uh, the first thing right away is a door a switches there. Windows, one touch automatic. Because this is a convertible, you do have two additional options for this particular model. Uh, this one on the left side there is going to be folding. Uh, all of the mirrors will just uh, go down. That's a really great thing that you can usually find in most convertibles. And in this particular one in the M6, there is that piece of glass in the in the rear there that you can raise and lower independently from anything else. So that again is specific to the convertible. Um, otherwise, any other variant of the M6 you have, just uh, ignore those two at the bottom down there. Uh, moving up to the top here is going to be on the left side is going to uh, fold in those side mirrors for you toggle switch over to the right is adjusting uh, left and right side once you have it to the side that you are interested in adjusting then move the dial right on top around and the glass will move around inside there right under the left vent is going to be your lighting options there keep that dial switched over to the left side that is going to uh, show you that the auto function is enabled keep it there it'll do everything else for you uh, moving down a little bit further is going to be all of your uh, various driving assistant features. So that is uh, what this particular vehicle has. So that is not necessarily standard equipment. So just know that there might not be anything down there or there just might be one button if you had the head-up display. But uh, essentially what this is showing us, uh, working our way uh, left to right, is this is going to show us uh, first going to be your blind spot detection. So when this is on, you know that the green light's on above it. Active blind spot detection, when changing the lane, you will notice in your side mirrors the little um, triangles that will light up there. Solid orange, letting you know that someone is in your blind spot. If you don't see that, you try to go over there anyway, that will begin to flash. Uh, and that is going to be in your side mirrors there. Uh, moving next one here is going to be your intelligent safety. So that is going to include frontal collision warning, which has the brake intervention, and also the pedestrian detection, which is a warning and brake intervention during the day only. So depending on which of those two things is in front of you, you're either going to have a red or uh, it'll be a red graphic of a car or a person show up in your head-up display or uh, in the center here loud audible tone will follow then of course the braking intervention there as well followed by you're going to have your lane departure warning this is basically letting you know if you're crossing over the center lane or shoulder uh, typically we're looking about 40 miles an hour or so this is going to happen if you do cross over that center lane or shoulder it will give a vibration here in the steering wheel letting you know that and then finally, almost cut off there in the corner, that is simply activating or deactivating your head-up display if equipped. Now, I just want to go back to the blind, the, uh, not the blind spot, the lane departure warning is uh, that is re uh, referring to these orange lines there. So when the system is enabled, it's going to look like this. When you're driving along, you're above 40 miles per hour or that, at that speed, what's going to happen is when the vehicle has picked up that center lane or shoulder, you're going to have these orange arrows being pointed inwards to the line. 
letting you know that it has found either the center lane or shoulder. So if you're on a, a great road that has clearly marked center and shoulder lane, it is not uncommon to have two arrows being pointed inward towards those orange lines, letting you know that it's successfully found both of them. Sometimes though, if you're on the back road, local road or something, that shoulder might not be there may not be uh, painted that line on the road you may only have the center lane and in that case you're only going to have an arrow being pointed in uh, to that center lane there so please just keep in mind those arrows are going to pop up and they're going to drop off as you're driving along that is probably the number one question that customers come back with in this generation of uh, active safety equipment when we have this graphic there that is a uh, what, why is it popping up? Why are there arrows here? Why is there an arrow there? Why don't they stay up? Um, it's all basically um, based off of the road you're driving on. So the better the road conditions are, um, the easier that the, the cameras and the system can see what's in front of it, uh, the more clarity that you're gonna have inside the vehicle like that. So that's how that's gonna work. Uh, moving over to the steering wheel here, I know there are quite a few components, so we're gonna break this down to make a little bit more sense for you. We're gonna start at the back, work our way forward. So in the back, you have these two uh, indicators, those two stocks on the left and right side. On the left side is going to be things like our turn signal indicator. So you should notice that flashes three times and then shuts off. So if you're gonna do a quick maneuver, try to get yourself into that next lane, that's a perfect use of that. However, let's say you're finding yourself in a, a turning lane, you wanna keep that on longer. We're gonna push this up a little bit further you're gonna fill that click in and then it will stay on the entire time. Uh, one touchdown will deactivate that function. Now taking a look at the end of that stock, you have uh, two options. At the top is BC and at the bottom looks like a light with an A over it. The BC stands for board computer. And what we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna move this down here. And as I push that BC button in, just so you can see, different types of content gets toggled around in there. And that is your preference. Whatever you like to see as you drive, you can just keep right up there. That little white box is your uh, speed limit. That's what that does. And so that'll just pop right up. Pretty cool. Um, bottom button there, that is your auto high beam function. So concept is headlights are on at night. You go to press that automatically, your high beams will activate. Um, any vehicle coming towards you, it will deactivate until they pass and then turn back on again. So you don't have to worry about turning this on and off uh, all, all over again. Um, and then I'm going to stop there for a second just because um, I forgot to mention about setting up the memory in your car. Um, I remembered when I was uh, adjusting the steering wheel. So a memory functions inside of the M6 is going to include your seats your side mirrors and your steering wheel. So adjustments for that is on the left side of the steering column right there. Left side of the seat will adjust the seats. And of course, as we went over the adjustment for the side mirrors uh, earlier. One key in the vehicle, please. Once you have, let's say primary driver has the primary key, adjusting everything that you need to. Right on the side of the seat, you're gonna press set and number one. You're gonna be good to go there. If there is a secondary driver, please then uh, primary driver is going to get out of the car, lock the car with, with their key. Secondary driver will come in, unlock with the second key, adjust what they need to, press set in two, and then they'll be good to go. So really making sure that, that the primary driver is locking at the end of setting up their setting. Secondary driver is unlocking with their key. That is really a, a clear way for the car to understand what exactly is going on. Uh, also, as a side note, if there is any sort of massage function uh, inside of uh, in the seats that you have in the car, that tab for the massage function is going to be on the side of the seat where your memory is as well. So all of that will be right down there for you. Okay, continuing on, moving on the right side of the steering column, we are going to be looking at our automatic, um, the rain sensing wipers. So what we're going to do, there's a button right on the end there. You might not see that right there. We're going to press that once. We're going to notice that's going to light up green, letting us know that the glass is now rain sensing. So depending on how fast we're driving, how hard it's raining, that sensitivity will increase or decrease as it needs to. So that just happens again. Don't even worry about anything else. There is a sensitivity of that. Notice more arrows is faster, less arrows is slower. 
that is adjusting the sensitivity of that auto function. So whatever's happening, if it's just not working for you, you can always adjust it right there and then you'll be good to go. Uh, pulling this towards you is going to spray and clean the front. So moving on to the paddle shifters, the plus and the minus there. So these are much more dynamic driving. If you would like to shift through the gears manually, you're, you want to kind of have that experience, you know, that comes from F1 racing. Uh, certainly feel free to use that. That's very cool. Um, otherwise controls on the front of the um, steering wheel there. So on the left side is going to be our cruise control in our M1, M2 setup options. And on the right side is going to be entertainment. Heated steering wheel is going to be right on the left side of the steering column, right where you were adjusting for the, so the uh, steering wheel there. So cruise control, how this is gonna work, you're gonna turn the system on by pressing the bottom button there. Once you've reached the speed you wanna go, you're gonna press set. If you brake, you deactivate. So resume is going to be right in the center, the RES there. You can, of course, use the pedals, uh, accelerator, a brake down by the floor, or this toggle switch. So one plus up is increasing by one mile per hour. Pressing and holding is going to be increasing in increments of five. So that's how that will work. Pretty basic cruise control, that's how, the, that's, how that's set up. Uh, of course, because you do have uh, an M model here, we do have the M1, M2 setup options. Uh, basically, the easiest way of describing this is this is your uh, custom settings that you can just have uh, ready to go when you're uh, set to just press that. So typically M1 is a more comfort, efficient oriented setting, your everyday drive, um, as you can see right there. We have the engine suspension and steering on um, efficient, comfort, and comfort. Uh, typically, that's what a lot of customers are setting M1 for. M2 is the opposite. That's usually that's usually a track setting. So what we have there is uh, Sport Plus, much more aggressive. Maybe DSC is shut off. Um, all of those sort of options as well. I will uh, briefly touch on that inside of the iDrive system, where to go to your M setup in order to do that. But just know once your custom M settings are all set up for one and two, this is where you go uh, to push it. So one touch there then launches all of those custom set setup options. Moving over to the right side is going to be all of our entertainment. So of course, plus and minus is right at the top there. Mode is going to allow us to toggle between um, all of our different media options, which if you have a head up display will be projected up there. So I know you can't see this here, but what I see is I see FM, if I press it again, AM, music collection, aux, satellite radio. So let's say satellite, I wanna see what my options are. I then can use this little switch here and scroll through all of my different options. So pretty cool. Voice at the top, one touch there. Brings up your assistant there. You can see this uh, microphone is moving because it's listening to everything that I'm saying right now. Uh, pretty intelligent. So uh, take me to Whole Foods, take me to Target, uh, say the name of the place, say the address, whatever the case is, it's gonna go and do that for you. Um, I do wanna just kind of put a disclaimer out there. Uh, we're in a 2018 right now, and that online speech processing with the natural language recognition, that is a subscription after a certain amount of time. So all of those sorts of uh, services that you get come with the vehicle for the first four years. So once you get to the point where you're exceeding the, the initial four years, uh, those are going to be, uh, you know, you're gonna have to start to purchase those types of things. So just keep that in the back of your mind and uh, that's all in the options, the packages are all very specific to the model year, the iDrive system, whatever is being offered by BMW uh, Connected Drive at that time. So keep that in mind. If you get in your car, you press that, you say, take me to Whole Foods, has no idea what you're talking about. Um, that's probably a clear indication that uh, that is something that's gonna need to be subscribed to, or you're gonna need more information to figure out what's going on. Uh, below that is going to be the phone. That is how we receive phone calls, also disconnect them. So one touch, that's all you need to do. If there is no active phone call and you press that, it does bring up the list of recent calls right on the head up display, pulls that right up there. So we're gonna move this over here so you can see a better view of the center um, console there. Now in here is going to be iDrive 6. Again, we are in a 2018. So this operating system, the head unit, all of that changes depending on the model year. So uh, just keep that in mind as well. 
um, if you did purchase this from South Shore BMW included in your initial uh, delivery uh, tutorial that PDF was your was the iDrive 6 uh, tutorial as well so please take a look at that at your convenience we're not going to go through that today we're just going to focus on more of the hardware but we do have on our youtube channel a full breakdown of the iDrive 6 operating system however the one thing i do want to show you guys today is the m setup options uh, because we are in the m6 and i just referred to it on the m1 m2 buttons so we're going to go under my vehicle and right there it says m drive one m drive two that's all you really need to do let's say uh, drive number one for example and here is the configuration. So DSC, engine, chassis, steering, transmission, head-up display, kind of the graphics, what you want to see, like a standard view or a more of a, an M mode uh, view there. And you can, of course, reset the M drive one. So these are your options. So for one example, go under engine, sport, sport plus, efficient. You go through here and build this out exactly how you want it. And once you do, and once you just like push back, then it saves whatever is in there. And you know from this point forward, whenever you press M1 or M2, whatever you have set up in there is going to uh, come into effect and, and that's what's gonna be. Uh, and you can see now going into uh, drive two, we have the sport option, sport plus for engine, uh, transmission is going on S2. We have the M view for the head up display. So um, typically this is kind of what we see well, for most customers, uh, of course, it really depends on how you're going to be driving the M6, where you're going to be going, are you going to be tracking the car, what you're going to do with it, uh, so all of that sort of thing as well. But that's how you get into setting up the M1 and M2. Okay, from there, we're just going to head on down here. So right in the center is going to be your hazards. Uh, below that is the door lock and unlock. So a lot of customers, if you're unfamiliar with some of the uh, older BMWs and the designs that we have there, is a lot of people are looking on the door for the lock and unlock, uh, like some of the newer vehicles. But it's gonna be right in the center. So that's what's gonna be there. I remember the first time I was in um, this generation um, six series, and I was like, it took me probably 45 minutes to find this button there and I was very um, embarrassed once I found it. I'm like how how could I miss that right in the center but that's where it is that's what it does right next to it this dial blue at the top red at the bottom this is the dial to adjust the climate so a lot of people don't really understand why we have this um, and it's kind of because it's like an in-between some customers love it some just don't understand it and never use it how it works is this so right now we have it at 80 degrees down there. We can, we can clearly see that. When this is kind of in the middle and this is balanced out, so I always kind of line it up to this here, you know this temperature is truly 80 degrees. That's what it does. Now, if I was more towards blue, it would be colder. So it's going to pull back a few degrees. If it's more towards red, it's gonna increase. So now this is more acting like 72, seven, I'm sorry, 83, 84, where this is now acting like, let's say, 76 or so. So it's a quick way of adjusting the climate without actually changing the temperature. I appreciate both points of views, not understanding why, why wouldn't you just kind of move this up or move this down? Um, but that is the intent, that is why it's there. We still actually have it in our new cars. We just embed it in the climate uh, menu in the background so it physically is no longer on the dash anymore that's why people think we got rid of it but it's still there it's just behind the scenes but the concept is still the same uh, moving down a little bit further is going to be entertainment and then all of our climate control entertainment is actually going to be very similar to what we discussed on the right side of the steering column there so the steering wheel so we have the volume increase and decrease just like the plus and minus mode in the corner is the same as the mode in the silver tab there am and fm is right below arrow left and right is the same as using this toggle switch going to the next playlist the next track you can of course eject your cd or dvd that's in there now one through eight is memory settings for uh, not just media and radio but it's for the entire iDrive system so let's say number one is going to call someone number two is going to navigate somewhere three is gonna pull up, let's say, your M setup menu, four could show you a sport display, five could be maybe tire pressure, if you're going on the track, that's probably very relevant. 
Uh, so, so on and so forth. So anything that you have highlighted in the iDrive system and then you press and hold, that's what gets saved there. Now, one thing that I do want to caution you just to kind of remember is that it is specific to the key fob. So just like your seats, your side mirrors, the steering wheel, if driver number one saves all of this out to be, you know, whatever they want, and they grab uh, key number two for whatever reason, this stuff is no longer going to be there. This because you're you're working off a of key number two at that point. So just keep that in mind of what's going on there. Climate is going to be very very uh, simple, uh, regardless of all the buttons and controls down there. So auto, when that is on, it's going to regulate where the airflow comes from and what the intensity of the fan speed is. All you need to concern yourself with is the actual temperature. So as we move this up and down, the vehicle is going to determine where that airflow should come from and how what the intensity is. If you want to control more of that, that is going to be when you push this button here. That person with the arrows being pointed to them, we're now going to focus our attention over there. So if you can see that, that graphic of that person, now the arrow is pointing to the floor. That's where the airflow is going. If I push it again, you can notice that the arrows are just going to continue to point in different directions and you're just going to leave it on wherever you want it to be. So if I do want it down by the floor, let's say there's something down there, ice cream, something I have to keep hot or cold. We're going to put it down there, put the fan speed up and then lower the temperature. So now in this moment, I am in complete control of the climate system. Uh, if I press auto, it's going to reset that. It does keep the temperature where I left it, but it will then determine where that airflow should be coming from, what the intensity of the fan speed should be, and all of that fun stuff. So that's how that works. Uh, dual climate, that's why what you see on the left side is also on the right side. That's how that works. Uh, down at the bolt below is going to be your heated seats. Highlights um, highest level deactivates one time each time you push it, just like that. On the other side is your ventilated seats. Same deal, just on blue. Every time you push it, it's gonna deactivate one time each time. Please keep in mind, um, a lot of people make a lot of comparisons with our ventilated seats to other manufacturers and their air-conditioned seats. So air-conditioned seats are not the same as ventilated seats. So ventilated seats quite literally is a fan in the seat and it's, it's pulling the cabin air temperature so just your cabin air through the seat. And what it's doing is it's going to provide, um, it's going to kind of provide that um, cooling effect on your skin by kind of pulling that in and uh, keeping your skin uh, cool there. Uh, air conditioned seats are actually chilling the seat. It's a, it's a whole different, I know Ford and Volvo, uh, those brands, they have air conditioned seats. And uh, when you um, actually sit in the seat, you can feel it, it's actually cold that's the the leather is chilled it's different uh whereas ventilated seats you're just using fans and pulling air in and out and doing different stuff that way so uh just keep in mind that's what it's going to do it's going you're still going to feel cool but it's your skin it's the it's tricking your skin making it feel cool that's what it's actually doing so the surface is uh is not as warm so a little bit different uh there in the center is going to be uh front to frost this is rear to frost this is your air recirculation inside the vehicle. And then of course we have the same controls over there for the uh, passenger. Um, right in the center down there, cup holders, USB is right down there in the center. Gonna come a little bit further down here. So of course you do have your M shifter in the center. If you're unfamiliar with this, you're simply just gonna foot on the brake and push this in the direction of what you want to have happen. So right now we are in neutral, but the emergency brake is on. That's why we are essentially parked. Uh, that is basically how you park the car too. Uh, keep the car actually in drive, pull the e-brake, emergency brake, and then shut it off. And then it puts itself in park. So a little bit of a learning curve there, but otherwise uh, pretty simple. Just push it in the direction of where you want to go. You have reverse up there. Uh, and you have drive right down there in the lower right side. Surrounding this is going to be all of your different options. So traction off, DSC, all of that is gonna be right at the top down there. Here you have your engine, suspension, and steering, all of your custom M settings. Now, this is all very similar to what we discussed on the M1 and M2 there, but this is kind of like on the fly, on the go. When you want to just kind of have that adjustment, you're driving along, you just want your steering just to be a little stiffer, whatever the case may be, 
you can press this and adjust this as you need to. And you will see that reflected in the bottom half of that digital portion of your uh, instrument cluster under the steering instead of comfort, it will say sport or sport plus. That's one way that um, you can adjust the stuff on the go. This is kind of the aggressiveness of the gear changes. So uh, basically being um, three different levels in being, you know, basically the most efficient, the most comfortable, um, up to the most aggressive uh, shift you can possibly have. So pushing that up and down, that will be reflected right on the center uh, display as well. Moving over here, we do have some added equipment. So we do have a camera button. So pressing that is going to activate these two cameras, either on the um, left, the front and right side there of the vehicle. So those are going to activate. So they are going to, let me just show you this. So on the left and right side of the vehicle, you do have uh, cameras. Okay, so that is showing the images on either side and putting them together. They're different from, uh, we usually have cameras right in the center of the front of the vehicle now, uh, but this is the generation before that. So this is, this is the image that we have there now. And then right below it is your PDC. That is your park distance control button. So that is going to be uh, right below it right there. So that is going to be the thing to give you your stitched together surround view of course, in this model, uh, just please be aware because the cameras are in the front, not necessarily in the center in the front, we do not have that full 360 degree surround view. So it's gonna be either side and it's gonna be your backup camera. That is gonna be the thing to stitch together that image. Um, of course, you can uh, push over and see your rear view camera if you need to and have your parking aid lines and the obstacle marking is gonna be all right there. Further down is again your emergency brake, pull up to activate, push down to deactivate. And below that is going to be, if you do have the convertible, this is going to be the thing to lower the windows, the glass, and also uh, bring the top down. And that's gonna fold right back into the trunk there. So uh, one touch there is going to bring it all down for you. And then when you pull up, it's gonna reverse those motions for you. Uh, right in the center there, you do have, there's a cigarette lighter there iDrive controller is gonna be right off to the side, which I know you can't see, so I'll just do this again. One touch there, that is where the cigarette lighter is. And then right above is the iDrive controller. So you can use this if your vehicle, I don't believe this one, this one is not touchscreen in the 2018, but um, some of them might have been um, in 2019 possibly, um, if that was around then. I, f I honestly forget the cutoff of when we stopped producing the six series. So. Um, if, if there was, if this was the latest generation, then my apologies, no touchscreen. It's going to be the voice control or the iDrive controller. If there was one after this, it likely got the the um, touchscreen. So that's there as well. The point being is that there are multiple ways of doing the same thing in this car. So you certainly can do that as you need to, whatever you feel comfortable with. And as I look around, this is pretty much everything that I can see inside of this uh, M6 convertible. Uh, again, so this is going to be pretty much identical from, you know, the M6 Coupe, the Grand Coupe, all of that. So the only difference is a couple buttons on the door panel and, of course, the uh, lowering the roof function there. But other than that, this is pretty much a tutorial that would cover uh, any variant of the M6. I hope this, is ha this has been helpful for you to kind of pull this all together. I know there's quite a bit of equipment in this car, so uh, that's a, hopefully a great resource for you. If you do have any questions, again, please check out our YouTube site. Go right to the playlist, scroll right down to M6 Tutorial. And again, uh, this will likely say 2018, but I'll include a, a range of model years that this would be applicable to as well. So um, any other questions, concerns, if you did purchase this from South Shore BMW, please reach out to your client advisor. Reach out to myself, any questions, we can respond uh, with the virtual encore by phone, by email, and of course, by a um, pre-recorded video. So any questions that you have, we would respond likely with a video similar to this, send us right over to you. That's a great resource. And also a, a resource that I encourage every customer to have is a new app, or relatively new app called the BMW a Driver's Guide. 
and uh, download that, put the VIN in there, and then specific to your vehicle, all of the equipment that you have is gonna be loaded right into that application. It is such a great uh, tool that um, every, I think every customer needs to have this that has a BMW. It's such a great thing to have. So uh, check that out as well. Uh, thank you again for taking the time to watch this video and uh, please subscribe so you can always stay up to date with our latest content. Again, my name is Chris and uh, thanks for watching the video. Please stay healthy and safe out there.